we're going to discuss the basics of immunology. Two very important terms you need to know when studying immunology are antigen and antibody. An antigen is a protein that marks a cell. A cell can either be a tissue cell from your own body or an exogenous cell like a bacteria or a virus. An antibody is something that your body produces in order to antagonize an antigen or inactivate it. Let's take an example. This here is a cell displaying a surface antigen. This antibody is going to bind to the antigen, and the area where the antibody binds is called an epitope. An antigen may be called an allergen or an immunogen. If it elicits an allergic response, it is known as an allergen. If it activates your immune system, it is known as an immunogen. Immunogens are the basic concepts behind vaccination. There are two main types of immunity. Your first line of defense, which is your innate immunity, and your second line of defense, which is your adaptive immunity. This is something that you acquire. Your innate immunity includes your skin, which protects you from all microbes, your mucous membrane, and mechanical mechanisms like coughing, sneezing, and vomiting. The normal flora is also considered a part of your innate immunity. Innate immunity is not specific. However, the adaptive immunity is very specific to a certain antigen. It has self and non-self recognition, meaning it recognizes if a tissue is part of your own body as self tissue or exogenous non-self tissue. It also has a memory. Inflammation is also considered a part of your innate immunity. It is non-specific. It is your body's response to any injury or pathogen. The aim of inflammation is to limit an infection. The inflammation will call certain cells and cytokines into action. The cells are white blood cells like monocytes, which are called macrophages in the tissue, neutrophils, which act in acute bacterial infections, eosinophils, which act in allergies and parasitic infections, and natural killers, which kill tumor cells and viruses. Cytokines include interleukins, interferons, and tumor necrosis factor. These will activate your adaptive immunity. Therefore, it is the bridge between your innate and your adaptive immunity. A term you will often hear associated with inflammation is the complement system. The complement system has three different pathways, the classical pathway, the lectin pathway, and the alternative pathway. I'll start by explaining the classical pathway. So as you can see here, this is a surface antigen. An antibody is bound to the antigen. The binding of an antigen to an antibody is what activates the classical pathway, starting by the first cascade, which is C1. C1 later activates C2A and C2B, and C4A and C4B. Remember, C4 comes before C3. This is the only tricky part in the cascade. C2B and C4B will join together to make an enzyme known as C3 convertase. C3 convertase cleaves C3A and C3B. This later activates C5A and C5B. Follows are C6, C7, C8, C9. Let's imagine that this here is a cell membrane. As you can see, C9 creates a hole within a membrane and causes lysis of the cell membrane. This is known as the membrane attack complex. The second pathway, which is the lectin pathway. It differs from the classical pathway in that what activates the pathway is not an antigen-antibody binding. Instead, it is a mannan binding protein binding to a mannose group of bacteria. Mannose group is a glycoprotein group on the surface of bacteria, and our body produces mannan binding protein to bind to it. When these two bind, they activate the lectin pathway. The lectin pathway does not include C1. In fact, only the classical pathway includes C1. So it starts directly by C2 and C4. The third pathway, the alternative, does not include C2 nor C4. It starts directly with C3 convertase, which is the common pathway in all. This later activates C5B and follows the membrane attack complex. Important functions of the complement system C3A and C5 have a specific function. They're called anaphylatoxin. They're important in initiating inflammation. They release histamine. Severe release of histamine may cause a drop in blood pressure and heart failure, which is known as an anaphylactic shock. 
C3B is important for opsonization. Opsonization is the process of making a microbe ready for phagocytosis. For example, let's imagine that this is a bacteria. C3B will attach to the surface of the bacteria so that when a white blood cell comes, it recognizes C3B. When this recognition happens, the white blood cell is going to phagocyte the bacteria. Watch our next video for more information about the adaptive immunity.